I'm Eric Alexander, and I tell the inspirational story of climbing Mount Everest with my good friend Eric Weinmayer, who's completely blind. And for many years, I've been asked to share my formula for success with hundreds of leading organizations because everyone faces Everest in their lives. And the insights I've gleaned on the highest mountains in the world have been used to help them get to the top of their own Everest. I've climbed all around the world. I've climbed the highest point on six of the seven continents. But the thing I'm most proud of is that I've been able to bring, more importantly to me, a person with a disability to the top of each one of those summits. One of them was a trek to Machu Picchu. I took nine blind high school students, many of whom had never been out of their really neighborhood. From that group, I've taken four blind teenagers and then summited Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa at 19,340 feet. I've climbed the highest peak on the European continent, Mount Elbrus. We made not only the first blind ascent of this peak, but the first blind ski descent. Well, we set off on a training climb of a mountain here called Ama de Blanc. It's a neighbor of Everest. It's not as high, but technically it's more demanding. And we would be going here the year before we were to set off for Everest. I was guiding my friend Eric, and by this time, I was exhausted. As I work my way over, I step on this rock. The rock tips over on me due to the snow and the ice, and I land on it. And then the rock starts to slide over the edge with me on top of it. It began to fall. It started to fall 600 feet, and people always ask me, what were you thinking? <laughs> You know, as if you can really formulate a good thought there at uh, 19,000 feet in the middle of a fall. But I was thinking what anyone would be thinking, and that was, do these pants make me look fat? <laughs> no, it was just, ah! Four-letter words were coming out of my mouth. <laughs> Grab, help, stop. I fell 150 feet, but I had the good fortune of that fall being broken up by a few good rock outcrops. And, well, I didn't break any bones, but that night, my lungs started to fill up with fluid. I got high-altitude pulmonary edema. I was then put in this chamber called a Gamoff bag. It's a pressurized chamber. Well, when I got home, my pulmonary edema turned into pneumonia. I felt as though I had the letter L stamped on my forehead. Two months before I was to go to Everest, I lost my best friend. He went out snowboarding alone. I got a phone call from his roommate saying, Joseph hasn't shown up at home. And when I looked down from the top of that cliff, I saw my friend snowboard looking back up at me. He ended up suffocating and dying. And pretty much fear and doubt have taken over. I didn't know what to do. I thought there's absolutely no way I'm coming back. Well, it was a year later then after my accident that I found myself back in the Himalayas. Working our way up through the Kumbu Valley, we would be trekking along thinking of new ways of doing things. Uh, trying to figure out what the most efficient way is to get my friend Eric up the trail. I would say Everest is a monumental task, no matter what, but to go there, to even think of doing it without eyesight, it makes it almost twice as high. The Sherpas said, in our culture, blind people don't come out and do this. And we're all ready to cry, you know, because he's going to tell his sad story of going blind. And instead, he just goes, and pulls out his prosthetic eyes. <laughs> Looks around the room, puts them back in, and the Sherpas who are there, <laughs> they just said, please do not do that again. <laughs> his life is completely in my hands and I'm responsible for every step he takes. Not only the steps that I take up the mountain, but every foot placement, everywhere he needs to go, every crevasse, every chasm, he's completely reliant upon me. So not only am I responsible for my own life, I'm responsible for him and for his. And it brings that element of trust to a whole new level. And that made us a strong team. We had trust. I would trust these guys with my life. Eric would trust me with his life and I would trust him with mine. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Eric Alexander. Welcome, it is great to have you with us. Thank you very much. Wow. What made you want to do this? Well, it had been a dream of mine ever since I was a kid. My dad came home with these big pictures one day and it said, prepare, ascend, and triumph. And it was of these mountain climbers just facing the obstacles. And I'd always kind of daydream about getting up into the high peaks. The ice fall is a scary place and climbing with someone who's blind, it takes longer. And as we set off, people are telling us that you're gonna die. 
They're telling him that to his face. They're telling me that, hey, he's going to take you with him. My response is, that's great, Mom and Dad, but... <laughs> I appreciate your comments, but really we have what it takes. But it was also the elite Himalayan veterans that were saying, you're going to die. You know, the thing that really made that hard to accept was that they didn't know us personally. And I imagine a lot of you are out there facing challenges and taking things on, and you have your critics, and possibly those people just don't know you personally and don't know what you're capable of. One or two team members uh, fail, and the whole, the whole thing can come apart, right? Mm -hmm. People were quick to say our weakest link was a person who's blind. Right. But believe it or not, that was our strength because that was the central point that we could all have a focus and it took the focus off of ourselves and our own egos and our own pride and all of these other things and it allowed us to maximize our individual strengths and gifts for the, the good of the team. I'm always looking for new mountains to climb and new heights to achieve even though I've stood on top of the world there's still so much out there that I want to do. I hope that you'll do the same, that you'll take a risk and you'll see the possibilities and you'll muster up that courage but that you'll do it together and find no limits to what you can achieve. And that's what other people have latched onto, and I'm honored and I'm humbled that they've latched onto this story in the way that they have to help them overcome their own obstacles in their own lives.